Hi, welcome back to Inspired by Yvette. And if you are new here, welcome. Today's video, I am going to show you all how I made this mug. This mug with my initial and my name on it. If you're interested in using infusible ink pens, this is the video for you. I do think it is beginner friendly. So if you are not a beginner, don't get frustrated with the talking and all the steps that I am showing because I am going to go into some details. I'm going to go into Cricut Design Space, show you what's shown on the screen, also show you what is shown on the maker, and show you all the things just from my experience in doing this for the last few years. Um, I was remaking that mug, that's why I was showing both of them there, but it's been a minute, y'all. I'm just so excited, so happy to be back recording videos. Maybe sometime in life I can go into detail about my life, but for now, um, Let's just get into the video. It's just good to be alive. So stay tuned. Hi, so I'm going to show you all a little bit of how I designed it. Um, I was playing around with different SVGs or different images, trying to see what I liked. The lady with the hat or the little heart flourish. And I just decided to go ahead and go with the flowers, the little bundle of flowers. I like that. So what I was trying to do was make sure that um, everything was set to the infusible ink pen setting. And I was using the fine point marker. There, as you see, the 0.4 millimeter one, of course. And both of those images actually came from Design Space, the Y and the little bundle of flowers. Um, and then the, I'll tell you a little bit later about the fonts that I used, the two fonts that I used but I was remaking this mug that I had um, from a while back. And so I'm trying to remake something that was broken. <laughs> so I went ahead and hid the woman and hid the little heart flourish. I just hid it on the side because I may use it again in something else just to kind of save it. And I was going ahead and unhiding the mug wrap, which you see there, the big rectangle. There were three of those. And I decided to let the Cricut cut those out instead of me just freehanding that by hand. It's just so much nicer when everything fits just right. So I was showing all of those, making sure that was unhidden. And we are about done here. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to, to make this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you all real quickly the fonts that I used. I'll let my um, live voice do the talking um, if anyone was interested in the font for Yvette. And that description. is over here. I've already welded it together, but you can right click on that. Go down here to image info and it tells you the font. And so that's Gablio script is what I used. I added the flourishes on it, um, and you do that using your character map. Um, I added, changed the Y, changed the E, changed the T's, just to make it the way I like it. This font right here on the scripture, make sure the more important things is mahogany script. And I think that's a font that I bought. I'm not sure, I think that's one that I bought. I know it's not a Cricut font, but that's what I'm using there. And these other images you can just find. This one actually, the roses, um, had a wedding phrase on the bottom. It says something about happy wedding day. I just cut that off of the bottom and use the top part of the roses. All right, and if you're interested in that image, let's see, image info. There you go. Let's zoom in. Okay, there we go. That is the image that I use. You can screenshot that. All right. There you go, and the rectangle is just what I use to slice it. So the one you're looking for is that says on your wedding day, M313 is what you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and let the Cricut do the work. Okay, so once you hit make it, go to, this is what the screen shows. So I am just moving things around, but in a minute, you'll see I realize I have to change the paper size to eight and a half by 11 because I'm just using regular copy paper for this. And so it's giving me four different mats because I'm using just basic paper. Um, and that is what I'm doing, just double checking and changing the sizes on all of that. I know that the first three mats are just the cut mats because it says basic cut on the side of them. 
And then that last mat down there says pin and basic cut. So I know that's the mat that's going to actually draw out everything. I, I just don't know how to change the matte color from black so I could see what I was, <laughs> see exactly what was going on. So if anyone knows how to do that, please put it in the comments and let me know how to change the color of the matte from black. All right, so we mirrored that last matte because this is heat, so it has to be mirrored. Um, otherwise, you're going to be redoing it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Now here I'm just going to select laser copy paper. I have that saved as one of my favorites and I always do more pressure just so and I am going to actually I was clicked on the last mat so I'm going to go ahead and click on the first mat and that will be the one that we load first which is just basically the fine point blade. Okay, so I have my copy paper loaded on a well-used standard grip mat, the green mat, as you see. Um, so it's not too sticky, not where it would be hard to come off. Otherwise, you want to use the blue light grip mat. So load everything, hit the load button, then we hit the C, and then the Cricut Maker, the design space actually will tell you when to put in the ink pens and all of that. So I put in the black uh, fine point ink pen first and hit the C and it is going to go ahead and start drawing out the image. I will let you all see a little bit of it. It's I always enjoy looking at it. I know it's probably monotonous for these videos so I am just going to go ahead and play a snippet of it and then I'll cut to the next clip. Of it, But it basically just reads what I put in there and it draws it out. And people often ask why can't the Cricut, why it doesn't fill in the letters. Like if you have letters that are not writing fonts. And it's because it essentially is a drawing. You know, it will draw and it will cut. But it's not going to like fill in something that you drew. Like a printer would. It's not a printer. It's a cutter. So I know y'all can kind of see me in the clip, but that's not the aim. The goal is to really show you um, how the Cricut shows you kind of the progress as you're um, making whatever it is. And now we're at 30%, 33% is drawing and um, shows over there what mat I'm on. So I thought you'd like to see that. Now it tells me to load the deep teal infusible ink pen, 0.4. So the scripture is in point four and the, um, my name is in a marker. So that will be the next prompt is to load the deep teal marker. So for now, we are going to load the fine point pen. Okay, so this is the one that I'm using. Let's see, it has the F for fine point. And I just keep all of mine in just some mugs, markers here, fine point there. And we are just going to put it in the clasp and I can't do it one handed, but Put it in there with the arrow pointed this way. Take the top off. That's what I'm about to do. Okay, and then you push it down. You hear a click and lock it back and hit the C. I'm always amazed at this machine, honestly. And actually, <laughs> for those who don't know, this is what I'm making. My husband. Um, this is the mug that I'm remaking, and yeah, you see why. And this is how it was the last time. So I'm just trying to recreate my mug, my favorite mug. Loaded the marker, the one that's 1.0. I loaded that one so it can draw my name. And we're about done. Let's do this quick. Wow. Now it's going to go ahead and cut out the wrap. And you'll notice with infusible ink, 
pens, they're always not the color it's gonna actually print because like that teal green is going to look like this once it's heated. Okay, so the Cricut has already um, done all this. So I just wanted to come on here and show you all. Everything has been mirrored. I am just going to go in here and color in the different little flower petals and things like that. I'm not sure, I may just leave this one the way it is, I'll decide. But I did want to show you in the name because like I said, Cricut doesn't fill in gaps. I will probably go in here and you see the little white little speck there? I'll just take the pen and fill that in. And this little gap, I'll probably just fill in like right there in the middle of the T. I don't know if you all can see it. But you can see it's a little bit of white. I'll just take the ink pen as I'm coloring and fill that in. So let's go ahead and get back in focus. And let me pull out some ink pens. And let me turn on with me. Y'all, I was doing the most, I know. I um would really let Whitney play if I wouldn't get in trouble for a copyright infringement. That is Miss Whitney Houston. That is not my voice, of course. And that is my favorite artist of all time. Now, back to the video. I am just basically taking some of the fine point ones and coloring coloring in different little things. No rhyme, no reason. I may have used every color in my mug. Um you know, in the little thing, every color I had right there, yellow, I had used reds, greens, teal, purples, blues, all of those colors. So it was really relaxing sitting there coloring it. So just take your time and enjoy the experience. So I got it finished. Next, I pulled out my Cricut mug press and I used some rubbing alcohol and a 15 ounce Cricut mug blank. Are the things that I'm using there. So I'm going to let you all listen and enjoy the rest of the video, to the live audio. Decided not to, but as you see, everything looks a little bit darker with the infusible ink pens, and you'll see when we press it how it turns out. So right now, what I'm going to do is just um, and then I have the, I cut out two of the wraps, and I'm just going to use this piece of paper, which was I didn't want to waste any more paper. So that'll be three, three sheets that can go around it. So we'll go ahead and clean off the mug. Open this up. Mug press is ready to go. So let me hurry up what I'm doing. I just take the alcohol and go around the whole mug. Basically, I go inside of it too, just to kind of clean it. Um, not necessary. <laughs> It's not necessary for you to do that, but I do. Get any lint off of it, any dirt, anything that would cause a speck on our mug. Okay, we're done with the alcohol. And now I just, that should be dry. Make sure it's not wet when you put your paper on it. Um, go ahead and since everything got cut out by the Cricut, I know it's nice and even. So I do it flush with the table and then just kind of wrap it around the handle. Hope I'm showing that right. So I just do it flush to the table, the sheet of paper to make sure it's straight. And then I wrap this to the handle, the tabs, which is why I like for the Cricut to cut it out. Okay, so I decided to speed up this little section of the video. I am basically just saying that you can read through the paper and make sure everything that you did mirror and can read the right way. And I'm just taking one piece of tape and using those tabs that are cut out there and taping it with that one piece of heat um, resistant tape. That is the blue Cricut heat resistant tape. And I love that. That's actually the only heat resistant tape that I use. Um, and I put one piece there. I've never had an issue with anything coming loose. It's nice and tight. And then once you get everything wrapped in, then the mug press is tight also. So 
I'm taking those three pieces of paper, the two that I cut with the Cricut that have the tabs. They're nice and pretty and even, so you, it's easy to tape those two, but I did put the third piece on there as well because I didn't want anything to stain the inside of my mug press. So I would suggest using all three pieces of paper for infusible ink um, because it did bleed through for sure those first two and it did stain the third piece of paper. So now we're ready to put it in. I pull the mug press over, put it in at a slight angle and not much to do. Just make sure everything is nice and centered and close it and we will wait the for every all of that to light up and we'll be done. Okay, we are just about done. As you can see, it is, if y'all can tell, lighting up over here, almost to the end. There we go, you heard it? I was talking, but it was a little tenant. That said, we're done. So I'm gonna open it up. And the handle is cool to the touch. So I'll just pull it out by the handle and sit it on the um, mat here. Move this back. So there you have it now. I see that, you see how that looks? So hopefully every, it didn't get too hot. It seems like it was going for a while. Um, so I'm gonna wait a couple, I can hardly wait. You know, it's very difficult. <laughs> I'm gonna open it up, that's what I'm gonna do. I will say this was very relaxing to do I played my music and I just did my little coloring. I'm looking for something to try to find the little weed and tool. Oops. Okay, so I can get the tape off of here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So I got that layer off. Let's do this one. The good thing, ooh, you can see how all that's on that paper that was used. Otherwise, that would have been inside of my press. Okay, but you can see through. Look at that. I think it's going to be good. Hold that thought. Okay, so I think it's going to be good. Let's do the last piece of tape. Took my glove off, it's still kind of warm. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's see what that wants. This is what I remember. That's really, really nice. Can y'all tell? I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And just like that, using invisible ink pens, I have a custom mug. I kind of wish I had colored this in now, I don't know. Anywho, that is that, I can always make another one. Um, so that's the good thing about when you break a mug and you know how to make a mug, uh, you can always remake it. There we have it. My new one, my old one. This one, actually, the the um coloring on the Evet is actually darker. I don't know if y'all can tell, but it's the same marker. So I don't know if it cooked longer, because even the green leaves in this one, it that green, I think it's the same green, I thought. But the yellow looks more vibrant. I don't know. It looks darker. I think it did cook a longer time. But, or either I need to adjust something with this because, um, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I see like some little yellow out here. Uh, can't see. Anyway, I love it still. There we have it. Y'all have a good day. And that is how you use Cricut Infusible Ink pens to make a mug. And this is what the paper looks like. I meant to show that. This is the paper. You can see all how vibrant that ink is. So this is the copy paper that we use to press the, the design. All of that is still left on there. Not too bad. This is the blowout paper. 
Okay, and just like that, I am done. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way through to the end of the video. Yeah, I like that mug. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate all of the support. Please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you all in the next video. And I'm sending you love from South Carolina. Bye.